How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Undercut, the GP Blog Podcast. I am your host, Joe Tyrrell, and the F1 season kicked off in Melbourne last weekend, and it was an absolutely thrilling race. We had a winner nobody saw coming. There were problems for Ferrari and McLaren, and Daniel Ricciardo had his wings clipped after just two seconds. We've got two experts to talk us through all the weekend's actions. We've got a hot take for you, and we'll preview the upcoming Bahrain Grand Prix. This is the 2019 season, episode one. But first, my guests, El Jefe, Nicholas Quales, how are you? <laughs> What's up, everyone? And we've got the head of the Roman Grosjean fan club, Adam Newton. Hello, Joe. It's certainly been an emotional week in Formula One and the world of motorsport with the sad passing of Charlie Whiting. Adam, it's a great loss for Formula One, isn't it? Yeah, huge loss for Formula One. Charlie's been part of the sport for... Uh, well, longer than any of us are born and longer than most people can remember since the 70s. So, uh, yeah, he did such a great job as a um, race director and he'll definitely be missed for sure. It came. As, it was such a shock as well, just days before the, the opening race of the season in Melbourne. Yeah, it, uh, it happened on Thursday and uh, you could tell by the driver's reactions how 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 shocked and, and sad everyone was because... Uh, Sebastian Vettel, for example, was talking about he was just walking over the track with Charlie that same day and just talking about about all matter of things with him. And then suddenly he's just not there anymore. And it will be so hard to replace Charlie because he he's been the race director for for over two decades, I think. And he did he did the driver briefings, which were so uh, interactive with other drivers always, and there was so much debate going on. Uh, there was a, lo- a really cool clip in 2017 that got released from the Japanese uh, debrief before the Grand Prix, and you can really see there's there's so much debate going on, but so much mutual respect between Whiting and 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 the drivers, and to have that taken away now is so difficult for a sport because the, the the debrief in Australia was over after 10 minutes which is so which would never happen with Charlie because there was so much trust and respect between everyone it's it's and he did so much for safety as well uh, in the sport he looked he always looked at IndyCar NASCAR other Le Mans and just how can we make the sport safer how can we make the sport better and to have such an important figure suddenly just ripped away is it's truly, uh, it's it's shocking. Yeah, absolutely. He was the man behind the halo, almost saved Charles Leclerc's life last year, that so many thought. Yeah. Um, and Toto Wolff said it will be impossible to replace him, so it's, it's definitely a big hole, even if Michael Massey replaced him at the weekend. Yeah, a huge hole. He did so much for the sport on a on a weekly basis that none of us fans ever ever get to see. It's only really you can tell by how the drivers have reacted. You know, you realise just how important he was to the sport and the day-to-day running. And all the teams running, you know, a thank you, Charlie, or a tribute to Charlie on the race car at the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, It it, it truly shows that how, behind the scenes especially, how how vital he was. And what everyone thinks now is that they'll have multiple people replacing him. So the fact that you need multiple people to replace one guy truly speaks to how, how... important he was in the sport absolutely you mentioned the look behind the scenes a slightly more positive note now though the f1 netflix documentary dropped just the other week how do we there was quite a lot in there and a lot we don't see adam yeah i thought it was really um insightful uh sort of getting these interviews with the drivers team bosses team owners and it sort of gave you a behind the scenes look at how f1 how f1 is run and how these results affect teams in the long term and yeah, I thought it was really exciting, really interesting, and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's funny because in interviews that we see on on television, drivers after they have a bad race or whatever, they always say, "Oh no, it doesn't really, I don't really care, it doesn't really affect me, blah blah." But in this documentary, you can really see that it does. It, it completely shoots your confidence. So you Grosjean when he had that struggling start to the season last year, you could truly see in the documentary how hard he had it, and um. You could kind of see it from an outside perspective, but 
when he'd do an interview, he'd still be like, no, I'm still the same guy. And, and in the documentary, you can see he's, he's so affected by it. And it's it's so cool to have this super personal side to the drivers. Yeah, just so well documented. You mentioned Grosjean there. There was plenty of focus on Haas and their setup, especially in the early episodes. And then there was plenty of focus on Red Bull as well. Nick, you weren't happy that it wasn't enough for Verstappen. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I'll try to be uh, not too biased because I'm because <laughs> I'm Dutch, but I didn't like how Verstappen was was portrayed as this like villain almost. Like the there was a lot of uh, airtime for Ricardo and a uh, whole episode basically. Yeah, of, uh, multiple around episodes. Monaco. Yeah, and I get it because he's outside of outside of Ferrari and Mercedes who didn't participate in documentaries. Did probably the biggest star in F one. Um, but Verstappen was kind of portrayed as this like little brat who's trying to st- steal my thunder, um, <laughs> and uh, and they only portray you know they showed like uh, oh Ricciardo got pulled there and he won those two, but they completely ignored the fact that Verstappen just outdrove Ricciardo for the last sixteen races of the season or fifteen races of the season, and yeah, I, I mean it was it was a little bit annoying for me. I'm not gonna lie. I think it would be cool if though to do a similar thing next year is to try and get Mercedes and Ferrari on side. Yeah. Because Mercedes Ferrari was the biggest battle of last season and we yeah. didn't see any of that. That's what everybody wants to see, isn't it? Yeah, what, that, we want to see what they're really thinking. But it, Toto it, it, Wolf behind the scenes, you know, what's <laughs> he actually tables. like? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's it is it's sort of a blessing in disguise for me though, because it is cool to because you know the media always talks about Mercedes and Ferrari, obviously, because they're the biggest team. But it is cool to see, you know, how the smaller teams operate, and to see, you know, like Magnussen and Hulkenberg truly hating each other. So that was my favorite episode, and Christian Horner and Cyril Abitibu like absolutely not getting along, and those awkward silences between those two. It it, it was cool for me to see just you know F one without Ferrari and Mercedes. Absolutely. One thing I would have loved to have seen in the documentary is the reaction and the fallout from Rosberg winning the title two uh, three years ago. Now <laughs> that would have yeah. been that would have been pretty interesting. If only. Yeah. That that was that would have probably been the best season title Hamilton, documentary. Hamilton coming head to head with Toto Wolff and Paddy Lowe. That would have that, that would have been something. That would have been so sick to see it that season. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe this year. Well, <laughs> we'll move on to the Australian Grand Prix now. <laughs> Rosberg's replacement, Valtteri Bottas, one of the performances of his career. Yeah, he said it himself. This is a be- this is the best race of my career, and um, it was certainly surprising to see him just from start to finish. There was just absolutely no doubt who was going to win. He had a he, had a strong weekend in general, didn't he? Yeah, he was never. Hamilton won all of the practice sessions, and he obviously got pole position. But Bottas is always right there, and uh, he had a flying start. He already passed Hamilton before turn one. And he, yeah, he just never looked back. He never saw him again. I mean, he passed Hamilton so soon when I was watching it, I still thought Hamilton was winning. <laughs> I didn't even see Bottas passing him was, until the commentators was a, were it's saying it. It's not as if Hamilton got a bad start either, I didn't think. But it wasn't anywhere near as good as Bottas is. Yeah, it was early, so maybe he just uh, were yeah. happy to sleep. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> One, is it too soon to get ahead of ourselves with Bottas? Yes and no. Obviously, it's just one race, and Australia has always shown that it's not particularly um, representative for the rest of the season. But on the other hand, uh, Bottas talked so much about this off season, him, him, uh, like refining himself almost, as if he just took a gap year in the Southeast Asia. He just, he just, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, just, a, he was an eighteen year old student <laughs> going away he on just a gap finished year. High school. Um, no, but he, he was talking about him hiring a sports psychologist and just improving mental strength and uh, him getting away from from F one to just you know recover and to him. To come out like this and put in a performance like that is really cool to see and I hope it's a sign of things to come yeah I hope so too but Ralph Schumacher wasn't too optimistic about it what do you think well no but we've seen before another Finn Kimi Raikkonen 2013 I believe for Lotus he won in Australia and didn't win another race all year Mm. so I hope that doesn't happen with Bottas because I'd love to see a Bottas Hamilton fight that would be so nice yeah yeah, it, it it would be weird seeing them go head to head because so far it's just been Hamilton dominating every every time, and you've never seen Bottas really put him under pressure like Rosberg did. Yeah, what I'll say is that Bottas, uh, which is to his credit, but Bottas was alone all race long, and my my biggest knock on Bottas is that he's not good when he when there's a driver right behind him putting pressure on him. That's 
that's when he tends to crumble a little bit. He's not clinical enough. Yeah, that's, that's, that's when I mean, he starts. He's quite as aggressive as the other drivers. Either, yeah, but he? he like starts locking up. He starts making mistakes. Uh, we saw we saw with Ricciardo in China. We saw with Ricciardo again when he drove into him several times. Um, I forget which race it was, but I think when push comes to shove, Hamilton is still the superior driver. But uh, yeah, let's let's try and be optimistic and hope this is going to be a legit Rosberg Hamilton 2.0. Adam, do you agree? It's it. We're going to be optimistic about this one. Yeah, let's let's be optimistic. Let's <laughs> say Bottas is going to have a really good season. He's going to keep doing these terrific starts, racing away a second and a half um, ahead before DRS comes <laughs> in and just wins five or six races um, before we get to the back end of the season. And we'll see where we are then. Hamilton's race was hampered by that supposed floor damage. Is that fair to say that really that cost him the race, or is uh, we're taking away I, from Boss's achievement? This is this is such a classic Hamilton thing to do, where he's not in front, and then he, he just he's just constantly on the radio, like my tires are are ruined, uh, my car's not working winning properly. As well. I, I I I hear a funny noise in my car, blah 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 blah. And, uh, just, he, I don't know. Every time he's not winning, there's always something wrong. Or there's always something. I I think he just uh, he saw he saw that both as were driving away. He was just like, all right, I'm not catching this guy. I'm just gonna let him win this one. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think that's it. He, yeah, he did he had have to hold damage. on. It was holding on in the end, wasn't he, with Verstappen? Yeah, Verstappen did um, did push him a little bit towards the end for sure, and that's a really good sign. What if what if Verstappen gets in on this title fight? Yeah. Oh, that would be so cool. Good news for Honda as well. Great news for Honda. Looked okay, didn't they? Didn't have any problems. No, no problems compared to Renault, especially. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, Sainz had a little Australian barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Put a shrimp on the barbie. Well, Verstappen had a great day, but you compare that to Gasly, Ooh. it wasn't so good. Well, not just Gasly Sunday, Gasly Saturday. Yeah. Perhaps you'd say maybe it wasn't his fault that he got kept in the garage in Q1, but still, if you're in a Red Bull, you cannot get knocked out in Q1, the first yeah. qualifying right. session of the season. And then to get stuck behind a Toro Rosso of Danny Fiat towards the end, that's again, I mean... Yeah, I mean... Held him off a... Plenty of laps as yeah. well, didn't he? I get it. You know, Kvyat was running a uh, was running uh, a setup with less front wing and more straight line speed, pretty much. But still, you know, you're in a Red Bull. He's in a Toro Rosso. You know, Verstappen passed a Ferrari, so I don't think that's an excuse. Uh, he should have just passed them. He was he was too. Uh, he should have been more aggressive. You could tell he was a bit hesitant. You know, debut race. You know. Yeah, let's yeah let's hope it's. We just, expect uh, more from him in Bahrain. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, we'll 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 get to that where, when we get to the preview. But it, he got P four there in in a Toro Rosso last yeah. season, so he, you know he has what it takes there. Well, we'll we'll talk about Gasly in a bit more detail later. But the man who he replaced, Daniel Ricciardo, had an even worse weekend. Yeah. Lasted about two seconds, realistically. Yeah, uh, it was weird, wasn't it? He, he just he, sort of went over panic. this concrete like gutter and. I yeah. don't know why he had to go so wide. He said Perez came across, but when you look at the replays, he still had plenty of space. Yeah, he didn't really need to go on the grass. Um, I think it's a case of him not really... Um, he's obviously such an aggressive driver, you know, the whole honey badger thing. Um, but in a midfield car, you, your first objective is just to finish. I guess it's always your objective to finish, but you, you you can't be as aggressive as he is, I think, always at, at a start, especially at an Australian Grand Prix, where overtaking is so scarce. How um, many crashes do we see on the first lap or incidents involving these midfield cars? Yeah, it's all the time, because it's such a pile-up at turn one. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he, he did do really well to not completely he just <laughs> he could have taken quite a few yeah, cars he, out <laughs> he could have decimated the whole field and he did well to, to keep it out of there but yeah i mean he, to his credit i guess he didn't see the he, he didn't know there was a bump there um when he lost his front wing but still it's it's a it's a rookie mistake not from the guy. smartest move to, no. to go on the you grass you expect better from someone of ricardo's yeah. experience now he's not a young driver anymore no, he's, he's been, been in, in the sport here plenty of time well, now might be his Ninth year, he did only yeah. half a year with HRT. But yeah, you do expect better. It's probably also a thing that he's in Australia. He wants to he wants to show those home fans, uh, you know, show what he's got and get off to a great start. And he was, he yeah, he probably just overhyped himself and just you know went for it. Just uh, showing off, doing a bit of rallying, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a target on his teammates back when they go to Hockenheim after he he made a little comment about it how. 
after being out-qualified by Hulkenberg that he was going to target him at Hockenheim. But, <laughs> but we'll wait and see about that. We'll wait and see. You mentioned Science having an Australian barbecue, Nick. Yeah. Even worse weekend for him. Yeah, I mean, for he had a really unlucky weekend because um, he also got knocked in a Q1, but it was because uh, he got on his, on his uh, flying lap, he got hindered. Uh, by I think it was Kubica. It was Kubica had a puncture. Yeah, it's Kubica's puncture, and that ruined his lap, and he got stuck in Q1. While you know his rookie teammate Lando Norris got all the way to Q3. Yeah. Looks bad on him, and then in his race, 11 laps in, boom, smoke out of the engine, fire, uh, and yeah. But it looks it looks more bad on Renault than on McLaren, if I'm honest, because there's nothing Science could have done realistically. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's uh, Renault have had Ricciardo n- retiring and already have an engine blow up after what Abitable said was their best winter ever. And to have your first race like this, it's, uh, I wouldn't say embarrassing, but it's, uh, it's a reality check. Disappointing. Yeah. And it's sure. just more of the same, really. You know, it's, it's always been like this with Renault. They say, oh, we've improved reliability and, and then bang, this happens again. It's definitely super annoying for them considering the success Honda had. In the um, yeah, in, terrific in, in the Red Bull. We mentioned Verstappen third, Kvyat tenth. That's a good yeah, start that was a really them. impressive. Yeah, it's a drive. really good start for them if you consider their last four years in Formula One, struggling for points every every weekend. Yeah, I mean they'll be very very happy and excited for what they can develop. Yeah, and they have the nicer sounding engine, I think. <laughs> nicer little, like, sounding. Yeah, yeah. The Honda engine has like a little whine to it, a little, little, <laughs> little raw. It sounds different than the rest. I, I like that. I haven't noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, probably the debatably the biggest losers of the weekend after coming in with so much, so much promise and hope were Ferrari. Yeah. Was this a one-off or could we, could we get used to this? No, I think I I do think this is a one-off. Um, as I said, Australia can be a bit uh, unrep- ep- unrepresentative for uh, the rest of the season. Um, Toto Wolff, Mercedes team principal, also said it's probably a combination of us, so Mercedes, getting it completely right and them getting it completely wrong. Um, I think Ferrari were talking about not getting into the right uh, tire temperature window, so they couldn't get the right amount of grip. But yeah, for them, um, head scratcher. Uh, they were so far off the pace in quality. They were so far off the pace in the race. Uh, Vettel was, after he had his tire switch, uh, was nowhere to be found. Le- Leclerc had to be told to step off it almost. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. Leclerc would have maybe passed Vettel in the in the dying laps. So they said hmm. no, child. Team orders. Sit back. You, it makes Team obvious who's number one. Race. Race. Yeah, no. But I I I, I will defend that decision because uh, Vettel just I don't know what happens to this car after his. Stint, uh, after his first stint but um, I defend that decision because Vettel is still the number one guy he's still the guy you'd expect to be quickest overall so to have yeah you want him to have the most points yeah Leclerc needs to show more for me to, to be that number one guy and to be allowed to, to pass him pretty much on Ferrari we said they didn't get their tyre temperatures right or everything but how long can Ferrari go keep making these mistakes yeah that it is happened definitely the all thing. last year they've started again this year i know they've had a restructure with binotto coming in mm. this can't you know continue they've every got, year they're they've in the same got position to get it right yeah that that's that and yeah that's true i can't defend that part that's that's completely true well if you're hoping for a mercedes ferrari duel this year well these guys think there is still hope yeah. i think there is still hope yeah but <laughs> ferrari need to get it right tactically they're not on mercedes it. are already spot on and ferrari are just last few years they've been behind and it, it could say Mercedes are a well oiled machine you could and it's not good <laughs> enough from Ferrari if they want to win titles I, I, I genuinely think Red Bull are, are in this title race Not maybe not completely but they're they're definitely closer than last season I'd say um, for Stappen passing Vettel on just on performance you know it's not it's not like a under, undercut uh, or anything like that he was genuinely quicker than him in a DRS uh, zone uh, which which bodes well a Honda engine passing a Ferrari engine that, that would have never happened last season with the Renault engine that yeah you know, so Red Bull are up there well Max Verstappen held the fastest lap up until the dire moments and it was but it was Valtteri Bottas who came away with that bonus point in the end yeah that initiative was introduced just a few days before the opening race Adam what do you make of it I think it's quite cool 26 points for Valtteri Bottas, new world record, most points from a single race. Um, <laughs> he can very, hold that one. Very significant Very record. significant. I don't think it's a bad thing. 
listen towards the end of the race every driver was like on the radio yeah. can we go faster can we go faster yeah. i mean bottas even wanted to pit just for soft yeah, yeah. tires just to set a faster lap because he was so far ahead he also ignored team orders as well in kind of they told him not to go for it yeah. but he's like nah i want i want 26 points yeah. obviously wanted that world record uh, <laughs> so that's he, the, he, went, he went for it and got it yeah i don't think it can be a bad thing some people say it's gimmicky or whatever but oh it's cool if you get drivers at the end of the race wanting to go fast yeah, is that it, not I mean, what we want to see in, instead of you know as we saw with hamilton just like cruising for the whole race and just getting that p2 you get drivers at the end just really going for it and what and you know thinking like okay i'm gonna really gonna push at the end to get that extra point because those points do add up at the end of the season i i yeah it's it's cool why why wouldn't you like it better than attack mode and fan boost in formula <laughs> either <laughs> let's not go there, yeah, let's <laughs> not go there for now. bottas was definitely the big winner from the weekend but who else, Adam, was your big winner? Uh, I think a, a one winner from the weekend is Kimi Raikkonen and Alfa Romeo in general. Uh, Raikkonen came home P8, four points for him, four points for Alfa Romeo. Giovinazzi didn't have a great race, you know, was kept out on old tyres to help Kimi's strategy. But I think it's very positive for, for Alfa that only Haas and Renault with uh, Magnussen and Hülkenberg were ahead of them. And they've made huge steps. You think where they were last year at Sauber absolutely nowhere in Australia but that was now, a real surprise for me that Raikkonen did so well but he's a good driver well we in know we know he's car. a good driver he won he won a race last season so I think it's a really positive positive start for Alfa Romeo and they can properly build on this and have a good go at Haas and Renault and Giovinazzi as well um, at the start when Ricardo hit that bump Giovinazzi's car got damaged from that apparently he said that after the race and that cost him a lot of pace so he maybe would have been way quicker if his car was all right. And yeah, Sauber, uh, Sauber, Alpha definitely uh, surprised me as well. But uh, who I want to point out is both Honda and Kvyat. We 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 touched Big on this. Big winners this weekend. Yeah, I mean we touched on this. But for Honda to come out of the gates like this, with I mean Red Bull coming into the season were a bit of a bit of a wild card. But Honda just showed we have a very very quick and in my opinion nice sounding engine. And um, <laughs> they do. <laughs> I'll look out for it. <laughs> yeah, and Verstappen, as I said, passing a Ferrari on in a straight line, and Kvyat finishing in the points for Toro Rosso it, after a year out as well. Yeah, and, and Kvyat, Kvyat keeping out a, a Red Bull behind him, and you know that's also bad on Gasly, uh, which we'll touch on in a bit. But yeah, Kvyat did so well, and it, and he was talking about in the off season. He he. He is a new. He's a new man. He, he's not the same, you know, torpedo that we used to know. Torpedo. Yeah, um, uh, and in, and he showed it. He was quick. A, a very good race from him, and I think he's he's back. And Honda promising. Let's see if the re reliability holds up. But uh, very very promising signs for him. The early signs are definitely promising, and a big surprise result for Kvyat. The man he held off for all those laps, Pierre Gasly. Adam is definitely a big loser. Well, yeah, definitely one of my big losers. Unfortunately. We met, we've touched on him already and we'll touch on him again uh, later on, but it wasn't good enough from him to finish P11. You yeah. expect way more. Even starting down there, I would still expect him to be in finish the points. Finish get a points. In that Red Bull, the yeah. way Verstappen performed in it as well, yeah. you expect better. I mean, if you remember Verstappen last season in, uh, I think it was Russia, where he started P19 and was P6 after eight laps, I think. Obviously a different track and stuff, but it's not good enough from Gasly. No, another loser for me is uh, Hass's pit crew. Not for the first time in what Australia What is wrong either. with Roman Grosjean's pit stops <laughs> in Melbourne? Uh, another, uh, how can that? How can this happen again? again. Yeah. You know, two years in a row, Grosjean's retired. Front left's, you know, if he kept Not going, on. it would have gone on its own little, made a new track in the gravel. <laughs> I felt sorry for Grosjean. He was having an okay race until then. Yeah, and, and the, the Haas had a reasonable weekend. Or yeah, Magnussen had a good weekend, weekend, and they could have got a strong double points finish, but... Yeah. Uh, <sighs> It's very disappointing if you're a Haas fan. Uh, if you're a Haas fan, <laughs> are you? Uh, are you a Haas fan? <laughs> well, he's a Roman. He's head of the head of the Roman fan, fan, fan club. Yeah, it's disappointing for them, and they need to sort it out. And next year in Australia, if he's still driving for him, Roman Grosjean cannot have a pit stop <laughs> error. 
Um, Nick. Who, uh, yeah, who I want to point out as as my big loser is actually uh, not a, even someone who's in Formula One. Yeah, no, not a, a driver who's not in Formula One. It's Esteban Ocon because uh, poor Esteban. Yeah, I think Ocon was hoping that you know <laughs> that Bottas would just punt it in the first corner and just have a horrible race and keep on going as badly as it was doing last season. But Bottas has the best race of his career. Which probably means that Ocon won't have a drive in Mercedes this season, which he, you know, he he won't admit it, but he wants to. And he was, you know, he was smiling and clapping at the end because he knows <laughs> there, yeah, you know, he know he he knows there are cameras trained on him. So uh, yeah, he's definitely a loser because this probably means he's not going to be Hamilton's teammate. And if Bottas keeps it up, he won't be Hamilton's teammate next year either. Because Hamilton's gone. Because uh, well, <laughs> like, uh, I wasn't saying Hamilton's going to go. Coming in. <laughs> I'd say maybe they'll stay with Hamilton and Bottas next year. Yeah. If Bottas proves himself and they'll have to find Ocon a drive lower down, otherwise he'll yeah. be in the He's forgotten got the talent to get one. We've spoken about F1 so drivers. many times, but obviously unfortunate set of circumstances. But we'll move on now to the, the Bahrain Grand Prix coming up next week. <laughs> We'll preview the Bahrain Grand Prix now and we'll quickly recap last season's race where both Red Bulls didn't finish and they only completed a combined four laps. Verstappen and Hamilton started at the back with Ferrari securing a second straight win and there was a DNF for Kimi Raikkonen for running over mechanic. Certainly one of the more bizarre ways to finish your race early. And Gasly, the man who had such a bad, well, a not a great Australian Grand Prix. I actually finished fourth in Bahrain last year. So what else can we expect expect from this track, Nick? This has to be Gasly's statement race at Red Bull. Uh, he got fourth there with Toro Rosso last season, qualified in sixth somehow, even finished finished even higher in fourth. And it was one of the most impressive races in F1 last season. So F1 is all about confidence. He'll probably remember that race from last season and he'll be up for it. And um, I'm really expecting him to to go at Verstappen at least and, and have, a, have a very good performance here for Red Bull. He had a good performance last year, Adam. Do you think he's ready to step up and have a good performance in a better car this year? You'd hope so. You'd need to, don't you? Red Bull need him to. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, Red Bull have signed him to score points for their team. Not yeah, a lot more you it. can say. Gasly yeah. needs to score. And heavily. <laughs> heavily. Who are your favourites going into this race? Bottas obviously leading with the 26 points. Favourites. Will Hamilton make a statement or a Ferrari? Yeah, it's the... The, man, the men to look for. It, it obviously is the obvious drivers. Lewis Hamilton is going to want to bite back. Everyone's saying, is this Bottas's year? In the media, they're like, Bottas is back. He's bigger, he's better. The he's bearded beard, Bottas. He's beardier. The beard that's feared. <laughs> and uh, Hamilton's got a reply to that and say, no, I am still number one. This... <laughs> This bloke isn't going to beat me this year. I'm still number one. And the same for Vettel and Ferrari. Leclerc, you could put in there as well. They're going to be like, you know, we were top in testing, but we were rubbish in Australia. Mm. They need to sort it out, get another win. Otherwise, the gap from Mercedes in the constructors is just going to widen and widen. Mm. Well, uh, if you look at the track, the, the Bahrain track is, there's a lot of straights in there. It's a very quick track. So it usually it favors the stronger engines and we don't really have a, a, a firm grasp on the engines yet but going off last season ferrari theoretically had the best the quickest car in a straight line so i would expect ferrari as well you know we spoke about gasly having a statement race ferrari need to really put the hammer down and, and fight back as well don't yeah they? just just show everyone you know they're they're not going to be eight tenths behind mercedes every single time Moving further down the field this time, last season McLaren had two two drivers in the top eight, and Alonso was fourth in the championship at, after this race. Can we expect something? McLaren was third in the constructors. Was it third? <laughs> McLaren was third. We'll Alonso that. was fourth. Um, yeah, it is an interesting track for the midfield. We had Ericsson getting in the points for uh, Alfa Romeo Sauber last year, Haas P five last year. Uh, I think Haas can do it again. Magnussen and Grosjean, they look the strongest. As yeah. long as they don't have any pitfall. They've error, got that pit Ferrari, Ferrari engine we talked about compared to the Renault engine, which is less powerful. It just is. I mean, it just is less powerful. And then who else we got? Toro Rosso, Alfa Romeo. They could be in the background getting P9s, P10s. Mm, so, I, yeah. I actually fancy Alfa Romeo to, to do really well here. And it's, it's cool because... 
you can't really predict this midfield, but you you talked about Ferrari engines, and obviously Alpha have one. Um, so I'm expecting big things from them. Further down, for me, it's going to be Alpha, Haas, and then Renault, and, and, and the rest. I think it's going to be a, a Ferrari-themed race. And we Alpha didn't, ahead of Haas. <laughs> and we didn't even speak about Racing Point. They they can also, you know... Stroll had a good weekend. Stroll had a very yeah, good weekend. Yeah, very good. Yeah, uh, Paris not not so much, but yeah, it could be could go anywhere. But if I had to make a prediction, it would be that the uh, the Ferrari powered cars from Alpha and Haas are going to be the two quickest teams in midfield. You mentioned your prediction. That was your midfield prediction. Can I get your podium prediction, Nick? I'll go Vettel one, for Stappen two, Leclerc three. Wow. I'm going to go a bit more... No Mercedes on the podium. I'm going to go a bit more conservative. I'm going to back a Hamilton. Um, he's going to come back. He'll win the race. Lewis Hamilton will win the race. Sebastian Vettel will become come second. So it's more like what we've seen in the past. Over, yeah. That's and the same. third place, I'm going to go with Charles Leclerc. Harsh on Bottas, considering Bottas, how well eh? he did last week. <laughs> he's gone but already. I'm saying Hamilton, Vettel, Leclerc, Bottas, close behind with Verstappen. Adam, your midfield. My midfield. Ha- are you Haas or are you Alfa I'm Romeo? Back in, I'm back in Haas and my boy Grosjean. Uh, <laughs> Alfa Romeo just behind for me. Mm, you got to have uh, all four tires bolted on, though, to finish. <laughs> <laughs> so this topic's slightly different now. F1 fantasy has become quite a big thing in our office here. Our league with the rights is quite heated already, but I'm, I'm not going to mention who's top of it. It's me. I, f- I forgot who's top. <laughs> yeah, it's I, me. I, just I don't know who it is. I'm top. But... Mm. Lucky. We're going to talk you through some tips. I'm not doing so well, but Nick, who's your pick for the upcoming Grand Prix? Yeah, if I have to pick one driver that people should be looking at picking up, it's Lance Stroll. Um, Lance Stroll's really cheap, just 7.7 million uh, if you're playing on the official F1 Fantasy. And uh, he, he, well, he won me a lot of points this weekend for such a cheap price in someone in such a quick car. We mentioned Racing Point probably being in the points. And Stroll, really strong in the first lap. Always overtakes a couple people. Exactly, that... and you get two points, isn't it, for every time you overtake someone. And yeah, he, he's just a, a guarantee for, for good points if he finishes the race. Uh, but yeah, that that would be my pick. Adam, who's yours? I'm going to say Kimi Raikkonen. He, did, he had quite a good first he had quite weekend, a good week. He? He's not overly expensive. He is more expensive than other midfield options. But I think he's a good option to captain. Obviously, you can't captain one of the top drivers. Has to be Gasly below. Gasly is the most expensive person. Has to captain. be below a certain price limit. And I think Raikkonen is a nice little pick. Can mm. score some regular points. Ten million. Ten million. Yeah. Not not very expensive. Seventeen points. Just that stroll. Uh, yeah. Just uh, I had them both on my team. That's all I'm going to say. More people than I expected picked Robert Kubica, partly <laughs> probably because of how cheap he is, but goodwill probably. But who are we avoiding this week? Who we're avoiding. You got Nick, one transfer, remember. Nick says to uh, buy Lance Stroll. I'm going to say to avoid his teammate, Sergio Perez. Mm. Sergio is obviously a fantastic driver. We've seen him on the podium plenty of times in his career. But he is unreliable, to say it. To say well, he, well, he out qualified Stroll at the he weekend and Stroll, then didn't he, have a good race. He just went backwards. He went from, from 9th to 13th. He didn't score many points. One point. One point. We don't know what the racing point car is like. Stroll is much cheaper than him. Yeah, I don't think you can trust Sergio Perez mm. in a race. He's more Very likely to anything to go by. He's as likely to pick. put it in the wall as he is to finish P three. Mm. Yeah, he's for eleven million. Uh, I think it's a bit of a high risk driver. High gamble. High risk, high reward, I guess, because he can pick up those podiums. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with Adam. But uh, the driver who I'd pick is higher up. It's actually Charles Leclerc, because at a price of twenty three and a half million, you really want your driver to to every week. Just, Plenty of points. Yeah, a, a challenge for a win. And even though I just predicted him in third, he will probably finish every race behind Vettel. We've we've heard the team radio, you know, Charles, can you back off of Vettel, please? And if you have a driver who's not allowed to overtake his teammate, why would you pick him for such a hefty fee? He 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 got twenty points, but for twenty three and a half million, I think there are there are better options out there. Bottas is cheaper than Leclerc. Yeah, I had Bottas, and he did me a. Did me a solid job, and I'm top of the league. So mm. he's he's uh, suggesting if he continues his form. Well, as well as the five drivers you get to pick, you get to pick your one. You get to pick your team. What constructor are you going for this week? Well, um, 
I'm stuck with McLaren, who got me no points last Great week. Great pick. Oh, Great oh, pick. Oh, and, so McLaren. And, he's, pick. and he's still top. I'm still top. So um, I'm saving up my transfers. You only get one transfer a week. So in between Bahrain and the third race, which is China, I think I'm going to do two transfers at once to manage my money a bit. So, But I would suggest avoiding McLaren because they got me no points. Mm. My policy with teams is just just pick a team that's going to finish very high up and just spend just have a large chunk of your budget on the on the on the constructor you're going to pick. I have Ferrari, Miss Gamble there, but if you're going to go further down, I would be looking at Haas. Haas uh, are as cheap as Alpha at 10 million. Uh, Haas picked up a lot of points uh, it, this weekend. Probably the strongest midfield team on pace right now. It's a uh, it's a bit of a tough one to call, but uh, I think Haas are, are definitely a team uh, people should be should be looking at. Someone I'd avoid this week. I think I'm going to substitute him as Daniel Ricciardo. Didn't have a good weekend, and he's got me minus thirteen points. I think a lot of people had Ricciardo, and a lot of people captained him. Yeah, like me. <laughs> minus minus twenty six. Minus twenty six. Yeah. yeah. Th- thank you for that one, Daniel. <laughs> Well, we have got a league. If you guys want to join it, if wherever you're listening from, it's the GP Blog Community League, and we'll leave the code down below in the description, and you can join it. So see if you can beat me. See if you can beat Adam. Shouldn't be too hard. Won't be too hard. Hopefully, by the end of it, <laughs> I'm top. And yeah, doubt it, mate. But it, it's a good laugh, and it's it's different to your most fancy things. So yeah, why it, not? It, come join us. Come join us. Right. So the highlight of the podcast for me is the hot take section and we've finally arrived in this section i will present a controversial opinion to these two wonderful gentlemen next to me and they'll have 30 seconds each to either defend or debunk the statement and at the end i'll pick a winner we'll tally up the points over the season and we'll see who's the better debater the the hot take king you guys get it yep i'm ready let's go right so the question is pierre gasly should have never gone to red bull adam i'll start with you and you're gonna you're going to defend Gasly. Yep. And you'll hear this sound when the, your time is up. Stop it. Okay. Right, sure. Adam, your time starts now. Okay, so Pierre Gasly. Uh, some people are saying he shouldn't have gone to Red Bull, but I think it's a very smart move from Red Bull. You think Max Verstappen wants to be leading that team. He doesn't want someone that's going to be right in his grill every single week, up in his gearbox like Ricardo would have been. And I think it will help Red Bull to be... A much better team this year and we mustn't forget that Gasly is a terrific driver in his own right he's won GP2 fourth of Bahrain last year he outperformed Brendan Hartley and I think he's a great driver stop it well uh, that's impressive he's got (laughs) a lot in there in 30 seconds wow he outperformed Brendan Hartley (laughs) (laughs) that probably is the (laughs) Le Mans winner I will add (laughs) come on (laughs) Brendan Hartley, I, I don't think we'll see him in a Formula One car anytime soon. But Nick, Ever. <laughs> it's your chance to attack Gasly. Your time starts now. Okay, so picking a driver next to Max Verstappen, you just want to pick the best driver, not the driver you think fits best with Verstappen. You have Danny Kvyat, a proven podium-winning F1 driver. You have Carlos Sainz. Uh, and just two drivers who are just objectively better drivers than Gassi. Gassi, a driver who can disappear during the season, can disappear in races, very uh, volatile driver. He can complain a lot. He can scream a lot. He'll probably fight for Stappen at some point in the season. I'll go there, good mates. Gassi is not consistent enough. One, there we go. Well, you both are very good defenses, and there's a lot there to take in. Adam's, Adam's, Bit about Brendan Hartley. Oh, that should have cost him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could work two ways, that bit. But purely for the Brendan Hartley bit, I'm giving this week to Adam. Get oh, in there. Come on. <laughs> One nil. Brendan, Brendan Hartley. No way. I think the real winner is Brendan Hartley. <laughs> Brendan Hartley's always the winner. Come on. Right, so that's one point to Adam. Nick, better luck next week. Yeah, I'll, come, I'll come back strong uh, yeah, next come time. Back stronger, <laughs> stronger competitor. I'm taking his head off. <laughs> Right, guys, that is all we've got time for this week. This has been the Undercut the GP Blog podcast. If you've got any questions for us, do send them in, and we will cover them as much as best we can next week. Hopefully, you all enjoy the Bahrain Grand Prix. Hopefully, you've all enjoyed this episode, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Thank you. Outro,